Today's Today's Sunny 95. Sunny 95. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. Thank you so much for joining me. This is show number 469. It's going to be a beautiful day. Maybe not so warm, but it's going to be a beautiful day. And you know what? We just have to take what we are given and enjoy it. And you know how we, you've heard the saying, make lemonade out of lemons. Well, that's what I do. And I think we should all do that. If we all have a positive attitude, I think the world would be better. All right. So before we get started, I'd like to remind you, all past episodes, complete with video, are available at thereasonswesmile.com. If you would please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. It would be very nice of you to do. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko. And before I get started with today's show, which is, here's the title, I'm bringing you a show called, So You Got a Fancy New Toothbrush for Christmas? Now What? Or you could better describe it, I guess, as we're going to compare manual brushes to rotating or moving brushes to sonic brushes and ultrasonic brushes and all that stuff, okay? And I, I'm guessing that many of you do have a new toothbrush in your um, you know, medicine cabinet or sitting next to your sink. And now you would like to find out, is it really better than the one you were using last year or around Thanksgiving? Okay. So, as I mentioned, it's show number 469. And uh, later, for those of you just tuning in or who've never listened to the show before, we always do a Dr. Kavitko question of the day. And we give away a free prize. And this week it is free flowers from the Santa's florist. So you might want to have your phone ready because in about 10 minutes or so, you'll be given an opportunity to call in and win. And I always make the questions very easy to uh, get the answer to. So there's not a lot of thought. I know it's early. And uh, all you have to really do is have your phone nearby, okay? All right, so let's start with, and by the way, let me just make sure I've given props. This is uh, an article by Dr. Connolly, uh, Dr. Thomas Connolly. And, <coughs> I'll, uh, and then later on in the show, we're going to uh, bring you some information um, that was on WebMD from Sharon Lau. And then later on, we're going to bring you some, show, some information that was in RDH uh, Magazine, uh, written by Patricia Walters, RDHMS, and Shelley Campbell, RDHMPH, which stands for Masters of Public Health. And let's see, I want to make sure I get all of the props out of the way first so I don't uh, leave anybody uncovered. And I don't, I think that might be it. Okay. So, all right, so we dentists get asked a lot about sonic toothbrushes and if they're really better than standard, standard ones. Certainly the advertising would make you think so, as would the price tag. Most sonic brushes run between $80 and $150 and some even more. But are they really better? Well, let's talk about that. To start, let's look at toothbrush technology. It's pretty safe to say that the basic design of toothbrushes has been around for a long time, and the toothbrushes we use today are very similar to the ones used decades ago. Shapes, that, shapes change a bit, of course. Bristle length varies, but the overall concept is the same. There are really three kinds of brushes. There are your standard non-powered brushes, which most people use. Then there are the electric brushes that first came around in the 1950s. And there are high-powered electric models, also called sonic toothbrushes, that were first developed in the 1980s. So the basic differences are this. Standard non-powered toothbrushes, they come in many shapes and sizes and are powered by your hand or wrist. The effect of using the brush is to scrape away plaque and other particles. These brushes are very effective at cleaning the surface of the teeth and are getting better at getting in between teeth due to the bristle design. But in the end, they can only clean what the brush actually touches. Electric toothbrushes are the next category. They were first introduced 60 years ago or so, and these toothbrushes move or vibrate in the brush head somewhere 
uh, between uh, 2,500 and 7,000 strokes per minute. So right now we're talking about the ones, you know, the spin brush or some of the brushes they spin and then the other part next to the round part that spins will oscillate back and forth. Uh, that's what we're talking about here. This eliminates having to move your, head in a your hand, hand in a brushing motion and instead just move the vibrating brush head along the teeth. I'd kind of call these types of toothbrushes gimmicky because like a conventional toothbrush, they only clean what they touch. Thus, the only advantage is not moving your hand in a brushing manner, which isn't much of an advantage. Sonic toothbrushes, these are the ones that we, uh, you know, called electric toothbrushes. They're kind of on steroids. And sonic toothbrushes generally vibrate between 30,000 and 40,000 strokes per minute. The advertising says that this gives you a better cleaning because they clean even areas where the bristles don't touch. So the question, is that true? And it is true. It is actually better than a standard toothbrush. Now, I actually, uh, and we're going to talk more, but I like the uh, Sonic brushes, and it's the only uh, type of toothbrush I've actually ever sold in my office. I, uh, I always give away the hand brush. Can't give away everybody a Sonic here, because that'd be $100 a visit. We're not charging. <laughs> that's be like more than half of what we're charging you. But um, if you really want to know, you know, I'll tell you early in the show, the Sonic brushes I consider the best. But that doesn't mean you can't do a decent job with a handheld brush or the, the ones that spin or vibrate. Now, the evidence does suggest that a sonic toothbrush will indeed clean areas that a conventional brush can't. This is because of the extreme vibration that is created. And it, what it does is it's a, sub, a substantial amount of energy and motion, and it powering the mouth fluids like saliva, water, and toothpaste into areas between teeth and below the gum line. These are the only kind of brushes that they call it, they clean beyond the bristles. It kind of sets up this foaming, this um, bubbling um, uh, effect. And those bubbles uh, kind of get in between areas where the brush isn't actually touching. In addition, studies have shown that people brush longer with a sonic toothbrush. All else being equal, brushing longer is usually a good thing, so score another point for sonic toothbrushes. And lastly, many sonic toothbrushes, or, ra or rather users, report that their teeth feel better with a sonic toothbrush, and that's worth something, right? However, doesn't, that doesn't mean they're truly better. It depends on you and your oral hygiene routine. So if your daily routine includes using a tooth standard toothbrush for two minutes and also floss, you're actually getting everything and more than a sonic toothbrush can give. Flossing, of course, is what is scraping or cleaning the areas where a normal toothbrush can't reach, and it does do better than any sonic toothbrush. Um, so don't think a sonic toothbrush is a substitute for flossing, despite what any advertising uh, thing that you might see will claim. Also, some people use a water flosser like a water pick, and again, this goes beyond what a sonic toothbrush can do. So what I'm saying and what they're saying is sonic is better for cleaning the teeth, but if you want to get in between where even the sonic can't reach, you still need to floss, okay? Uh, so, so in the end, it really depends on you. If you don't floss, and I realize that most people don't, I do that. I really do. It's funny because people come in and they will have... Uh, I know that what they've done is they haven't flossed uh, since we saw them six months ago, except for maybe three days ago when they know they have their next cleaning appointment, and then everybody gets in there and they're flossing, and, they're, and you know what, I can tell because you've, you've, your gums are all red and cut and stuff from the floss, that's how I know. <laughs> and, and so anyway, hey, we're happy that you're at least doing it, and you should be too, but we know. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so, but if you do brush diligently and floss regularly, and or use a water flosser, sonic toothbrush probably isn't totally necessary. However, we are talking about maybe you got one for Christmas um, and you have one now that you didn't before. So, you know, hey, we just heard that it is actually better and in combination with everything else, it's a good gift that you got. But without it, you're probably covering the basis if your current oral hygiene routine did include flossing and good brushing, okay? Now, if you really want to be sure a, ton a sonic toothbrush and flossing and water flossing is an unbeatable combination... Um, it's, it's, uh, well, you know, I, let's just say I did the research, I looked up and found out, and so, you know, believe me, <laughs> what can I say, believe me, but it, it's a great combination when you use them all together. So until we, uh, until, you know, at least laser technology or technology gives us laser-powered nuclear fusion space-age super toothbrushes, uh, I think this is the best thing to do, which is a sonic and flossing and, uh, and even, um, you know, anything you could do, water flossing, you could do it all together. And it's really good. But the most important thing is you have to do it. You have to do it at least two times a day, and you have to do it for at least 20 minutes. If you get every surface of every tooth clean every day or a couple times a day, 
it's amazing how healthy people can be. It really is. It's, it's like, it, I feel so good when people come in and I, I can say, hey, John, no cavities today, and your gums look great, and you don't, don't have gum disease. It's just really something that um, I love to do because it's so much easier to say that to a person and say, you're good, see you in six months, than to say, oh, John, you know what? You have 18 cavities, you have two abscesses, we can't save that tooth because of gum disease. And then they look at me like it's my fault, or they look at me like I just need a boat payment. And just so you know, my boat's paid off, so it's not that. <laughs> but anyway. Okay. So, let's see how we are doing on time. Yeah, we're doing a... And by the way, later in the show, we're going to be uh, giving you five common misconceptions about power toothbrushes. We're also going to be giving you the ratings on the, uh, the best uh, rated toothbrushes, the ones that I was able to find, where... Um, I'm trying to find my notes to find out who rated them. Oh, it was topreviews.best when I was giving out prompts. I forgot to mention them. And so let's go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and do Dr. Kvitko's question of the day. Remember, you're going to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. They will be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. And, but before we do that, those of you that aren't new listeners know we want you to listen to this. This station will not be held liable for any contesting during The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kabitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kabitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household, prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions of Dr. Kabitko concerning this contest or eligibility are final. And now it's time for Dr. Kovitko's question of the day. All right, and like I said, I like to keep the question simple because maybe, maybe you haven't had your coffee yet or you haven't had your second cup. And so here it is. The question of the day is, today's show is about what? Is it about A, comparing different types of floss, B, comparing different types of mouthwash, or C, comparing different types of toothbrushes, okay? The winner is going to receive a free floral arrangement from DeSantis Florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. The number to call is 614-459-9769. That's 614-459-9769. So go ahead and call now. Hi, I'm Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2. Look for my smile on the big screen this summer, courtesy of Dr. Gavitko. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Gavitko, the world's most interesting dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanitko, general dentist and host of the Reasons We Smile radio and road show. Did you know that you no longer need to visit several different dental professionals to get more complete dental care? We handle everything from cleanings and orthodontics to restoration, implants, and smile makeovers, all in my office. And now we have two locations. Get the most advanced technology and procedures available today. It's more complete dentistry. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. Hi, I'm Johanna, and I've been a dental patient at Dr. Kavico & Associates for over 10 years. I would really recommend Dr. Kavico for your family's dental care. They're friendly. They're always there to help me. I feel like family when I walk in the door. It's clean. It's comfortable. Even if I have to bring my kids, they have a great playroom for them. I know when I'm with Dr. Kavico, they are taking that extra time to make sure that I'm going to be the healthiest I can be. They've been great. I love them. Call Dr. Kavico & Associates today, 614-262-9000. Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. All right, we're back.
we're back. We're doing Dr. Kavika's question of the day. And honestly, uh, we, we still have, we're still looking for a caller because it looked like our phone system was uh, not really operating. I think we heard some fax tones or something. So uh, we're going to leave that open. The question is, what is the show about today? Are we comparing uh, different types of flosses, different types of mouthwash, or different types of toothbrushes? And it's actually toothbrushes is the answer. So there's an easy one for somebody who wants to win flowers. The number to call is 614-459-9769. And so I'll just go on with the show and we will uh, cut in later and tell everyone who the winner is. Okay, so um, now WebMD had a little, you know, just a little basic thing about the different uh, kinds of brushes out there. Talking about how it's one of the big, biggest decisions you make. Um, you know, you have soft, you have medium, you have hard bristles. And although there are dozens of types uh, of different toothbrushes, and then the question is, are powered brushes worth the extra cash? Regular toothbrushes get the job done when you use them the right way. The problem is that many of us don't use them the recommended two minutes or get to every tooth. That's when a little extra power can come in handy for some people. An electric toothbrush can cover a large area faster, so you clean more surfaces in the same amount of time. And when you brush by hand, you only make about 300 strokes per minute compared to what I just said earlier, 30,000 to 40,000 uh, strokes per minute for a sonic brush. So... Um, also, the pros of power toothbrushes are better at cleaning your teeth than manual ones. And once one recent study showed that uh, people who use them had less plaque and gum disease. Electric toothbrushes are helpful for certain people, such as those who have trouble using their hands. They're also good for kids. Kids may think their elect the electric toothbrushes are more fun and easier to use. People with braces, they can clean in and around the metal parts better. Lazy brushers, so if you're a dentist, I'm sorry, if your dentist finds you're not removing enough plaque with a manual toothbrush, it's possible that they will suggest an electric one. Cons might be the fact that the, of the cost. Regular toothbrushes usually cost a few dollars, while you can spend up to a hundred or more on electric ones. Brush heads for power gadgets need to be replaced as often as the regular brushes, so that extra expense, expense can add up. So keep that in mind. Uh, and also, powered brushes can lead to a false sense of accomplishment, meaning you may feel like you're brushing better because you spent 60 bucks <laughs> on the electric brush, even though you're not. Powered ones are also bigger and bulkier, which makes them harder to stash in your purse or suitcase. So, and as we mentioned, the different types are rotary, where the head moves in circular motions or oscillates up and down, sonic, which is a side-to-side -side motion, and ultrasonic, which is a fast side-to-side -side motion, and ionic, where the brush head doesn't move at all. There's a low electric current in the bristles that attracts plaque. So it kind of sucks the plaque out. So anyway, uh, let's see here. A uh, question about how much you should spend. Disposable battery-operated brushes cost about $6 to $15, while rechargeable, Urgent uh, ranges, or, uh, I'm sorry, versions range from 40 to about 150. Some come with a travel case and built-in sensors with a signal when you're brushing too hard. Others have built-in timers that beep every 30 seconds for two minutes to let you know it's time to move on to a different part of your mouth. Those are kind of cool. And by the way, my Sonic brush does have that. And I don't, honestly, here, I'm going to tell you personally, I don't think two minutes is enough. My wife will tell you this. I walk around the house brushing my teeth. I don't just do the, you know how that beeps and every 30 seconds it says, okay, well, so for instance, you have four, four corners of your mouth. So the premise is... You brush the upper right for 30 seconds, the lower right for 30 seconds, the uh, lower left for 30 seconds, and upper left for 30 seconds. That's what the beep is for. Well, I, um, what I think of is I've got to do the inside of the teeth on my upper right for 30 seconds, the outside of the teeth on my upper right for 30 seconds, then I do the same thing on the lower right, you know, so now I'm, I'm like four minutes at the, at the minimum. And then I add another minute or so as I clean the backs of the front teeth, kind of like bringing it out of my mouth towards the mirror, okay? So, um, so yeah, it's, uh, but, you know, I, I think the, you know, we, we're realistic and we understand that two minutes twice a day is maybe all we're going to get from people who would rather uh, not be brushing their teeth at all, right? <laughs> Just like run out of the house. So anyway, uh, when you, like a car, when you, uh, you pay for extra, all the extra for all the bells and whistles. You just have to pay for those. And, and you can do without them, but they are kind of cool. You know, sometimes it's good to be reminded it's time to move on to the next spot, the, that two minutes. But at the end of the day, how you use your toothbrush is more important than the toothbrush itself. Making sure you're brushing with soft bristles and a fluoride toothpaste for two minutes twice a day is optimum, and don't forget to throw in the flossing. So, looks like we have, our, uh, we have a winner. We're going to go to the phones now. Oh, we, oh, oh, no, I'm sorry. We just gathered the information and hung up on her. <laughs> okay. Oh, she had to go. Got it. Okay. No problem. So the winner of the uh, free flowers from DeSantis today is Kirsten White. Thank you, Kirsten, for calling in, and I will make sure uh, those flowers arrive, okay? 
Awesome. And if I look at my clock, oh no, I've got a little bit more time before we go to our next break. So let me start in on, and remember, we're going to try to, well, here's what I'm going to do. I have this rating from topreviews.best, and it's uh, the best electric toothbrushes of 2016. So in the interest of time, I think I'm going to do this first. I'm going to, uh, let's see, you can check and see if this is one of the ones that you uh, were given for, um, uh, for Christmas or as a gift or you bought yourself. The best pick is the Philips Sonicare Diamond Clean Electric Rechargeable. And by the way, that's the brand that I sell in my office because it's the one that I just like the best. So it looks like I knew what I was talking about. Okay. Um, the uh, next one is the Oral-B Smart Series Black 7000 Power. And um, right after that would be the Wellness HPSTX Ultra High Powered Sonic Electric. Now this one was given kind of like a little award for the, the, for the most reasonable price of these high-priced uh, brushes. And then we're down to number four now would be the Philips Sonicare Essence Sonic, the uh, HX5610 Electric Toothbrush. That would be the fourth place. And fifth place, Water Pick Complete Care Water Flosser and Sonic. So there was a time when the Water Pick was just the jet of water, and now they've combined that with, with Sonic bristles. And so they have a Sonic flosser and the Sonic toothbrush, and it's a pretty good combination. And there it is, just popped up on the screen for those of you watching the video, the top picture on the top right. Okay, so let me just recap those. The best electric toothbrushes of 2016 were from best to um, low, yeah, from one down to five is Philips Sonicare Diamond Clean. Oral-B Smart Series Black 7000, Wellness HPSTX Ultra High Powered Sonic Electric, Philips Sonic Care Essence Sonic, and then Water Pick Complete Care Water Flosser and Sonic. Okay, so uh, and there uh, and there are you know you can read about them and see why one is better than the other. But um, anyway, there you go with that. And so I do think it is time to go for, to a break now. And so what we're going to do is um, oh wait a minute, do we have? Nope. Okay, got it. Yeah, we're going to go to a break now. When we come back, I'm going to cover the five common misconceptions about power toothbrushes. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko. Estás escuchando con Dr. Kavitko aquí en su sesión favorita. Hi, I'm Dominique Reigert. Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of the Reasons We Smile radio and roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? <laughs> All right, we're back. If you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is The Reasons We Smile. It's episode number 469. And earlier when I gave the name of the winner of the flowers from DeSantis, I realized that uh, we didn't give you her entire last name. It's Kirsten Whitehouse. Apparently, somehow, um, she forgot to tell us they had a two-part last name. But anyway, and I thought she, she was back on the phone. I thought we were going to talk to her on the air, but she basically wanted to correct her name because she had to head out of the house. And I don't know where. Get to church, probably. Okay. So thank you, Kirsten, and those other folks that uh, tried to call in. Please call back next Sunday. Now, remember, this is from RDH Magazine, and it's five common misconceptions about power toothbrushes. So there are several misconceptions out there, and here's what you need to know to separate the fact from fiction. Although power toothbrushes have been available for decades, it's only been recently that uh, there, has, there has been this explosive growth, now accounting for 40% of all toothbrush sales. A quick scan of your local drugstore aisle reveals a, lar reveals a large and confusing array of choices. Here's the first misconception, that there's no real difference in plaque removal between manual brushes and power brushes. 
Every dentist knows thorough plaque removal is essential for optimal oral health, and research has shown that this can be achieved with use of a manual toothbrush and good brushing techniques. But in the early 60s, consumers were given an alternative toothbrushing option with the introduction of an electric toothbrush. Research on the plaque removal effectiveness of these bulky, expensive early models was inconclusive, leading most dental professionals to shy away from recommending them. However, fast forward to 2005, and the picture changed dramatically. The electric toothbrush has evolved into the power toothbrush, encompassing higher-priced rechargeable models, as well as the low-cost battery-powered toothbrushes, with brush head and bristle designs being more advanced and based on oscillating, translating, vibrating, or ultrasonic technology. So, the misconception number one is that there is no real difference, and there is actually a real difference. Now, um, because manu manual toothbrushes differ in their abilities to remove plaque, a multitude of brushes from different manufacturers with varying head and bristle configurations have been tested relative to power toothbrushes. In general, manual brushes are inferior to the power toothbrushes for plaque control. Even the most sophisticated of designs with manual toothbrushes remove significantly less plaque than battery-powered toothbrushes. Okay. What plaque removal benefits um, have been clinically observed when comparing manual toothbrushes or power toothbrushes? And uh, basically it's saying that um, these upscale versions are 10 to 49% uh, better at removing plaque than the manual brushes. Let's go to misconception number two, again in the interest of time, because I think we only have about three or four minutes left, that there is a higher incidence of gingival or gum injuries, such as tooth and tooth abrasion and gum recession, with power toothbrushes when compared to manual brushes. And the reality is, the design of the power toothbrush head, its portability, such as cords and chargers, and the softness of the bristles, contribute to the ease of use, effectiveness, and safety of the current brushes. So basically what they're saying is, is that there, is, there are no more injuries to the gums or teeth by using a powered toothbrush than just a normal toothbrush. And there is some thought that in some instances, it's actually safer to use the powered brushes because you're not pushing as hard. You're just holding it there, okay? And it's letting the bristles do the work. And that's, that's probably the biggest, uh, biggest part of that. A third misconception would be power toothbrushes are only suited for special patient populations. Now, remember I mentioned how what kids and people with, who can't use their hands very well and uh, orthodontic patients. Um, so... That's a misconception, though, because uh, extensive research has demonstrated that power toothbrushes have many advantages over manual toothbrushes for specific populations, including the braces for people, the people with impaired dexterity, children, adolescents, patients with hard-to-access areas such as dental implants, and periodontal patients with low home care compliance. For example, patients with fixed orthodontic brackets who face the challenge of adequate plaque control have shown in at least eight clinical trials to reap superior plaque benefits with a power toothbrush. Gingivitis and or pocket, uh, gum pocket depth, depth improve, uh, improvement were also demonstrated. So, um, you know, it's just, um, it's not that they're only suited for those populations. They can, it can do a great job for lots of things and, and, uh, and for people that, you know, don't need them. Okay, misconception number four. Uh, clearly it says, um, here's the misconception. Clearly research shows power toothbrushes outshine their manual counterparts. And as much as I've been urging you to, and telling you that sonics are better, I also did mention that if you just use a manual brush and you also floss and you do a good job, then um, you're okay. So the misconception is uh, that they're really, really outshine. And, and of course, for the best results, uh, here's the misconception that you have to uh, purchase one of the most expensive power toothbrushes. And we've already said that is not true. The power toothbrush market has experienced explosive growth since 1999 with retail purchases doubling and now exceeding $847 million in annual sales. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of money. So, um, but clinical studies have demonstrated that some of the most affordable power brushes, those in about the $10 range, perform as well or better than the expensive brushes in removing plaque. So that's good if you don't want to spend a lot of money or don't have a lot of money. That's awesome to know, right? So, and then let's see, time-wise, let me just see, because I know I want to make sure that we don't run into next, uh, next the show for the next half hour. Um, and yeah, about a minute or so left. Okay, so misconception number five is that people who try power toothbrushes will be more compliant at first, but will eventually switch back to manual toothbrushes once the novelty has worn off. And uh, the reality is the results of a large clinical trial of 16,000 participants suggested that adults who switched from a manual toothbrush to a power toothbrush were more satisfied with its effectiveness of the power brush 
and generally did not switch back after the trial ended. And as dentists and hygienists know, patient compliance can make, a, make or break a self-care regimen. Several clinical trials have concluded or have been conducted to test the novelty effect of power toothbrushes and the impact on compliance and results demonstrated that the use of power toothbrushes encourage patients to brush longer. Longer brushing has been reported to result in an almost linear reduction in plaque, and this was true in both children and adults. Consumers perceive power toothbrushing to be easier and compared to when compared to manual toothbrushing. Okay? That is it. I am actually out of time. I am so sorry to my producer. I don't know if he's noticed, but let me just say that uh, be sure to tune in next week and, th and right, uh, don't yeah, let's see. Tune in next week and every week right here on your favorite station. Goodbye. This is Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1, urging you to tune in next week with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko. If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to TheReasonsWeSmile.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you'd like Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist, to speak at your next event, please call 614-262-9588. That's 614-262-9588. Or send an email to speaking at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. WSNY, WSNY HD Columbus, broadcasting from the Byers Dublin Mazda Subaru Studios. They're under the big windmill. You found today's variety. This, this is today's Sunny 95. The opinions expressed in this program are solely those of the advertiser and do not reflect the opinions of this broadcast entity or its affiliates. Franklin Communications or its employees, management, or other advertisers on this station. The advice and products endorsed inside this program are the responsibility of the advertiser and the experts they've employed to speak on behalf of their product or service. Good morning, Columbus. Welcome to Down the Garden Path. It is our weekly landscaping show brought to you by Greenscapes Landscape Company. I'm your host, Bill Gerhardt, and today I'm pleased to have a very special guest with me who will answer some of our listeners' questions that were sent into our website at uh, info at greenscapes.net. So, Mark Moore is the nursery buyer for Greenscapes, but has had, had an interesting career as a city forester and is a master ISA certified arborist. Welcome, Mark. Thank you for having me today, Bill. Appreciate it. Well, tell me, Mark, what what have you done in, in the past? You know, you were city forester. Mm -hmm. I was and... city forester for Bexley for for almost uh, twenty one years. Wow, yeah. Uh, I worked for the city for thirty years, um, and our responsibilities in the forestry department were about fourteen thousand street trees and uh, thirty two boulevards, uh, about. 30 different gardens and uh, just general landscape areas, 12 parks. And then separate from us was a place called Jeffrey Mansion, um, mm -hmm. which is a 